Steve Abel and Dean Caleb sat together on the park bench. The former talked while Steve fought to keep his mind off his dead wife. The cancer had stolen her away like a thief in the quiet of the night. They were married for 53 amazing years. He still felt the coldness of her lifeless hand in his own. Dean touched his shoulder and asked if he was all right because he seemed a thousand miles away. Steve replied that everything was all right and he just needed a decent eight hours of sleep. Dean elected not to dig any deeper, and instead continued that he believed if you gave a man a gun, eventually he would find a reason or a good enough excuse to take a life and give birth to death. Steve gave the younger man an incredulous look and said that he hadn't walked enough of the earth to assert such a claim. Dean pointed across the park at two little boys who were fighting over a soccer ball. They threw angry fists at each other's faces with the intent to inflict serious harm. The incident took Steve back a few years, to a terrible story he had read in a newspaper. A group of young kids were playing on their walk home from school, when two of them got into an argument over a girl they both liked. One of them ran home and got his father's handgun. The deadly weapon was kept in the bottom drawer of the nightstand, which for some stupid reason was unlocked. He went to the other boy's house and shot him twice in the face. Dean continued that people were experts at death and destruction. They thrived off of conflict. By the millions they gathered in front of the TV to enjoy manufactured drama. People wanted peace until they found it, and discovered how painfully dull it could be. And being boring was the worst offense of them all. It was human nature to make war, and not love. Steve agreed that there were a few bad apples, but by no means could they ever ruin the whole barrel. He himself was only alive because of the kindness of strangers. If the world was really as bad as Dean claimed then Steve would have been dead before his 16th birthday. He would never have been blessed with six decades with the love of his life. There was always more good than bad in the world, even though it sometimes seemed the opposite was true especially because every other day there seemed to be an international tragedy. Steve and Dean watched as the boys' caregivers snuffed out the adolescent violence and made them apologize to each other. It lifted the old man's heart and proved that he would be a fool to lose faith in humanity. Dean digested the beautiful moment and asked what good was amends to a man with a bullet in his head, because forgiveness didn't have the power to restore the dead. Steve shook his head at the clearly disturbed younger man and concluded that they would just have to agree to disagree about the nature of humanity, because for those who did not believe, no proof was possible. Later that night, Steve lie awake in bed again, unable to fall asleep without Eleanor's warmth beside him. His thoughts traveled back to the sunny afternoons they spent in the park. It was her favorite place in the whole world. She said that the children's laughter, and the barking of the dogs, and the happy families spending time together, reminded her of the good in the world. It was a bubble which contained the image of what life was meant to be. Steve's eyes stung as the tears forced their way out of the abyss. Invisible to the old man's eyes, Dean stood at the foot of the bed and watched Steve's memories play in his mind like an epic romance. Even to a thing like him, who had seen the absolute worst depravities humanity was capable of, the tale of Steve and Eleanor was a powerful one. It almost dissuaded him from what he was about to do. He exited the room and left the old man alone with his agony. As Dean entered the grandson's room, his eyes lit up with a menacing red light. He thought to himself that Steve would see firsthand what a man did when he was handed a gun. He touched the boy's shoulder and he screamed as if being tortured by every single living soul in hell.